This is lesson 5.2, analyzing exponential functions. In this lesson, the focus is on sketching graphs of exponential functions and describing their characteristics. First thing we'll start off with is what the definition is of an exponential function. It says an exponential function is any function of x that can be written in the form of y is equal to a to the power of x, where a is a positive constant. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at two different scenarios. Um, the first scenario we have here is when a is greater than 1, and the other scenario we'll have here is when a is between 0 uh, and 1. Notice that these are, of course, though, positive constants. Um, the two different scenarios you'll see, one's going to be exponential growth, and the other one's going to be exponential decay. So exponential growth, for instance, you might have heard scenarios of where um, the, the bunny or a rabbit population in, in your given city uh, may have exploded, and that's because the reproduction of uh, bunnies um, follows uh, this exponential growth um, pretty closely. So uh, you may see some funny examples that I might give you uh, throughout this unit, but um, let's uh, dive into what these graphs look like. So the first thing I'll get you to do is uh, draw our x and y axes. Uh, I'll do this with um, my blue pen right here. So uh, let's say that's the axis, so this point is 0, 0. We'll do the same thing over here, um, like so. The reason why I'm not going too far into the negative direction here is because uh, my a value is going to be, uh, of course, greater than 1, so we don't need to worry about anything down here. So if we were to go and graph uh, something like this, uh, what you would see, give or take, is that you're going to get a graph that's going to look something like this. Now, depending, of course, on what your uh, a value is, that is when the graph will change. So we'd call this exponential growth on this side. On the other side, what you'll see is you'll see something that's almost the exact opposite. You'll see um, a point start here and then kind of work its way down like so. Okay. So what I want to do, though, is talk to you in general about what you're going to have here. So uh, on the left-hand side, exponential growth, exponential decay on the right-hand side. What we can say is when a is greater than 1, as x increases, y increases. So this should be pretty obvious. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, obviously y is getting bigger. So what we'd say about this function is we'd say the um, function is increasing. Okay, Exponential growth, we shouldn't be too surprised that it's increasing. If we go to the other side right here, we can say um, when a is between 1 and 0, as x increases, so as we get further and further this way, we see the opposite is happening. Uh, y decreases. And we can say it actually is approaching 0. So we'll just say it's approaching going to 0. Okay. So this is an example. We would say the function is not increasing but decreasing. Okay. And in general, that will happen for um, every one of uh, these exponential functions. Okay, so a couple more uh, characteristics I want to go over that you're going to see right here. Um, the first thing I have here is it says uh, exponential, it's uh, not spelled very well, uh, exponential functions um, where y is equal to a to the x when a is greater than 0. So those are the two scenarios that we um, just dealt with. are going to have these characteristics. So I'm going to give you about uh, five different characteristics that you're going to see. Okay, so I'll write this uh, in blue here. So please write down these uh, points. So the first one is the graph has a y-intercept that is always going to be at 1. Okay, And you can probably think about why this is going to be the case. Because remember, regardless of what your base is right here, regardless of what a is, when you raise a to the power of 0, it always equals 1. Right? Anything raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So that is saying that when you have an x-coordinate of 0, you're going to have a y-coordinate of 1. All right, So that should make sense. Next thing we have, the graph approaches the x-axis. We can go a little bit further. But never reaches it. Okay. So what we know then, if it's approaching it, we've seen this in previous units, the function has a horizontal asymptote. with the equation y equals 0. Okay. Uh, third point that we know. The graph, because it has that horizontal um, asymptote, shouldn't be too surprising, the graph does not have an x-intercept. 
Okay, and so these two points, you can very much argue, um, kind of are the same right there. Um, it makes sense that if we have that asymptote going down there, that we're not going to have an asymptote. Sorry, we're not going to have uh, an x-intercept. Um, what do we then know about the domain? So let's talk about, in general, the domain, and then we'll deal with the range down here. Well, the domain, what we're going to have is if you take a look at these functions, if we go back up here, um, they do go infinitely to the left and right. So this is getting closer and closer to zero, but it's never touching zero. It's never going to stop there. This, this is also increasing. Uh, same on this side. We can go infinitely to the left and the right. So we would say the domain can be anything. X is a member of the reals. Okay. In, in general, though, what we can say about the range is that uh, we can't have any negative values. Um, and it can't ever equal zero, so we're going to say that the range has to be greater than zero. So we'll go y is greater than zero. Okay, so those are the basic characteristics that every um, exponential function will have, uh, of course, assuming that uh, a is greater than zero. Okay, so let's go and take a look at uh, our first example here. All right, example one says graph y is equal to one third x and determine the effect on y when x increases by one, where the function is increasing or decreasing the equations of any asymptotes, and the domain and range of the function. So the first thing I want to do is let's make a table of values here so we can see what this function actually looks like. So we'll start by making our table of values right here. We got our x coordinate and we have our y coordinate. All right. So let's pick some values that uh, are kind of centered around the middle of our graph here. So we'll start at negative 2 and let's our work our way to positive 2. Um, sometimes these points will be sufficient, sometimes they won't be, but usually it's a good um, starting point to give you at least an idea of what the function is going to look like. So if we take negative 2 here, so we have 1 third raised to the power of negative 2, if you recall what happens when you have um, something raised to a negative power, you have to take the reciprocal. So this is actually the same thing when you raise something to negative 2, is actually just flipping this, and so having 3 to the power of 2, which would give you 9. If you take uh, 1 third and raise it to negative 1, it just flips it, so rather than making it 1 third, it actually makes it 3. Anything, as we know, raised to the power of 0 is 1. 1 third raised to the power of 1 is just itself. And then this means square, so square each of the numbers, so you would have 1 ninth. All right? So let's go and graph uh, these points and see what our function looks like uh, approximately. So at negative 2, we have a point up here at 9. At negative 1, we have a point right here at 3. We, of course, have our y-intercept at 1. We shouldn't be surprised to see that. And these points are, are tough to do very accurately, but we'd have approximately 1 third right here. And at 2, we'd have 1 ninth. So in general, we can see that this function is going to look approximately like this. Now remember, it's never going to cross the x-axis, so it's going to get kind of infinitely close to it. Okay? So we need to answer the second part of this question. We need to say um, what's going on here. Is the function increasing or decreasing? Well, quite obviously, we can see that this function is decreasing. Okay. Um, it says find the equation of any asymptotes. So we know that the asymptote that we're going to have here is going to be, so I'll just maybe write asymptote uh, is going to be a horizontal one, and that's going to be at y equals 0. All right. And then I think the last thing that we need to do here is we need to find out what the domain and range was. So what do we see for the domain? Well, the graph goes infinitely left and right. I know it looks like it might be flattening up uh, here, but it's going to always go to the left and right. So we'd say that x is a member of the reals. Okay, so that's the same as what we saw in the characteristics on the previous page. And um, what can we say about the range? Well, the range is that y has to be greater than 0. Okay, so none of that should have surprised you right there. Hopefully you're okay finding these, um, these values here for our table of values. Uh, that is uh, how you go and graph uh, an exponential function. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what we can say about uh, the graph of an uh, exponential function. It says the graph of an exponential function may be stretched, compressed, reflected, and translated um, in that order specifically, so you might want to note that, um, similar to the functions that we looked at earlier in this course. And so I've given you a, uh, a list of different things here. You'll notice that everything is very, very similar, only that our function looks a little bit different, of course, because it is exponential. So like as an example, um, when the, uh, the x value, sorry, when the c value right here is less than 0, it's going to get reflected in the x-axis. That should look familiar to you. Uh, when the d value is less than 0, you're going to get reflected in the y-axis. So hopefully these things are looking fairly similar to what we explored um, when you were first introduced uh, functions uh, back in Unit 3. So in general, what we can say is we can say if you are given some function that looks like the following right here, that uh, in general, we know that our x and y coordinate are going to be based off of these values like so. 
Okay, so um, this would be kind of the part that I'd want you to focus in on. Uh, this describes why this uh, action occurs. Okay, so let's go to the next page and we'll take a look at how we can use that information uh, to graph uh, a function. So example two says use the graph of y is equal to two to the power of x to sketch the graph of y is equal to three brackets two to the power of negative x plus two and then determine if the function is increasing or decreasing just like we did before in the previous example um, the intercepts the equation of the asymptote and the domain and range all right so let's first start by taking a look at this function that we're trying to um, get towards so the function that we have right here y is equal to three brackets 2 to the power of negative x plus 2 uh, like so notice that it could be written slightly different okay and so we often like this x uh, exponent right here to be um, just a 1 and so what I'm going to do is notice that I can factor the negative out of both those terms so I can write this as negative x minus 2 okay so I've just taken a negative out of both of those terms okay so that's something I always want you to try to do is to try to make this uh, first term right here um, positive because what that's going to allow us to do is going to allow you to easily calculate what this this value is right here which is going to be our h okay so if we think about the general form of an exponential function which was written on the previous page it looks like this y minus k is equal to c so c would be my three right here a to the power of d all multiplied by x minus h so what I want you to do, maybe I'll just put that in um, a little rectangle right there, is I want us to try to break this down and write what our k, our c values, our d values, and our h values are for this question. Okay, so in general, what we can, we can say is that k, okay, because there's nothing on this side of the equation, there's no number being added right there, we know that there essentially isn't a k, it's equal to zero. All right, the c value, as I just said, c is equal to three. Uh, what else do we need? We need to know what uh, the value of d is. d was that value that we just factored out right there, so it's going to be a negative. Of course, that means it's just a negative 1. And then lastly, we have our h value. And our h value is this value at the very end right here, which we determined it was equal to 2. Okay. The reason why it's equal to 2 because, remember, we set that part equal to 0 in order to determine what h is. All right. So with that being said, what I want to do, and this is why you're given a whole page here, is because there's a little bit of uh, work we got to do. Let's go and tackle our table of values. I'm going to make this table of values, though, in a little bit different fashion than we've done before. I'm going to model the function y equals 2 to the power of x on the left-hand side. I'm going to model the function y is equal to 3 to the power of 2 um, minus x plus 2 uh, on the right-hand side. Okay, so what, uh, what we're kind of hoping to do here is we will go and graph this function right here, and then we'll try to see in general how we should manipulate the function, how should things change. Okay, so uh, if I get rid of that little part right there, I'm just going to write the order pair x, y, and I'll show you why I'm going to do that once we get over here. So in general, I'll pick the same ordered pairs that we've done before. So if you remember uh, on our first example, I picked x values of negative 2, and I worked my way all the way down to positive 2. Okay, so that's my ordered pair. So what I want us to do now is generate what these y values are going to be. So relatively straightforward, if you take 2 and you raise it to the power of negative 2, um, that's the same thing as you take the reciprocal of 2 first, which would give you 1 half, and then 1 half squared is 1 quarter. Okay, of course you could use your calculator if you want to, although I think you guys are capable of doing it without. 2 to the power of negative 1, that's just the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. Anything to the power of 0 we know is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is just itself, and then 2 squared is going to be 4. Okay, so that is the function y is equal to 2x. Okay, but we have some different things going on here. We have the 3 in front, and then we have a negative uh, d value, and we have h being 2. So how is that going to uh, manipulate your graph? Well, if you go back to the previous page, remember that I was talking about the importance of this stuff right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information, what we know about our d, h, uh, our c, and k values, and I'm going to apply that to my ordered pair. So in general, I can say that this ordered pair, the ordered pair that was just x, y, is going to be negative x. Okay? The reason it's negative x is because we have a d value of negative 1, so it would be uh, x over negative 1, which is just negative x. Okay? We need to add 2, because that is my h value right there. And then finally we come over here, and to find the y coordinate, we simply just multiply it by c, so we'd have 3y like so. 
Okay, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my given ordered pairs x that I have here and I'm going to substitute them uh, into this little equation that we've uh, created. So we're going to have the ordered pairs and I'm going to just set up my, uh, my brackets like so and the commas in the middle. If you substitute a negative 2, uh, a negative negative 2 is going to make you just a positive 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. And we should be able to see a pattern form right here because this will be a nice little linear relation. Um, negative 1 times the negative is going to give you 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. And you'll see that these numbers all just go down by 1. Okay. Well, what happens to our y values right here? Well, we need to take 1 quarter and we multiply it by 3. So that gives me 3 quarters. 1 half times 3 is going to give you 3 over 2. You're more than welcome to write that as a decimal, as 1.5 if you want. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And 4 times 3 is going to give you 12. Okay. So let's go now and graph these functions. Okay, so just to indicate the different functions that I'll do here, maybe I'll use two different colors. So let's go and graph our original one right here. I'll just try to indicate that this is the function I'm going to use uh, with orange. Uh, so this is my original function, y is equal to 2x. Uh, the first, first order pair was at negative 2 and a quarter. Uh, the next order pair is at negative 1 and a half, so that would be approximately right here. Uh, the next order pair shouldn't surprise you, the y-intercept at 0, 1. And then we had 1, 2. And then I think we had 2 and then 4. So give or take, this function is going to look approximately like so. Okay. Obviously, that is an increasing uh, exponential function. And let's go and graph uh, our other function. We will use uh, yellow right here Okay, for this one. So hopefully that's not too close to the orange that so you'll be able to see the difference. Uh, so let's see what's going on with this function. The first order pair we had was 4 and 3 quarters. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and just below 1. And then we had 3 and then 1.5. So 1, 2, 3, and 1.5. We have 2, 3, like so. And then we had the order pair 1 and then 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the y-intercept was at 12. Now 12 doesn't really fit on here. We'll just try to put it approximately up there. So in general, we see that we have our new function, right? This is the function that we have, um, sorry, right here, uh, that we graphed in yellow. Okay. So the last thing, if we go back up to our question that we needed to answer, was we need to deal with all of this stuff right here. Okay. So we need to figure out if the function is increasing or decreasing. Um, I'll get you to write this down, but of course it is uh, a decreasing function, like so. Uh, the y-intercept, the y-intercept is this ordered pair right here at 0, 12. So if you want to write that that is your intercept. Of course it's not going to have any x-intercepts, um, because none of these exponential functions will. Uh, what else do we need to know? We have a horizontal asymptote that shouldn't surprise you. So the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. It's just going straight across right here. So if you wanted to write that in, you could. Uh, and then finally, domain and range uh, isn't really changing for any of these functions, as you've probably seen. Uh, what x values do we have for my domain and range? Well, we have any x values. x is a member of the reals. And the range has to be greater than 0. Okay, so I know I raced through uh, that one. There was a lot of stuff uh, kind of going on right there. The, the thing I'd get you to remember, though, is that if you have a strong grasp of uh, this ordered pair and how to find um, those uh, corresponding coordinates, um, you should be good to go when you set up your table of values. Uh, make your original table of values and then uh, make the new one right here. Okay, so that concludes this lesson. Uh, you have learned how to go and uh, graph uh, exponential functions and to determine their uh, characteristics. Thank you very much.